Hello dear learners. And welcome to this new series of e-learning lectures, aimed at developing your knowledge and skills in the area of ESP, English for specific purposes. This is lecture number 7. Approaches to ESP course design. By the end of this lecture, learners will be able to Define the meaning of an approach in ESP course design. Make the comparison between ESP course design approaches. Define the strength and weaknesses of each approach. But, before we move forwards, if you have not been here before, then, welcome to the Univ English channel. If you do like videos like this, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. And also smash the notification bell. To receive notifications of when I produce more videos like this. So, let's begin with this pivotal question. What do you know about approaches in ESP course design? Introduction English for specific purposes, ESP, is a course intended to equip learners with a certain level of English proficiency for the situations in which language skills are performed in a specific context, target needs. Nowadays, ESP is used in a variety of contexts to help language learners cope with the features of language and to develop the competencies needed to align with the requirements of a given discipline, profession, or workplace for which the learners want to master English. ESP is considered the most prominent areas of English foreign language education, as it provided instructional objectives, materials, and methods and approaches that were based on learners' needs and potential. The importance of an ESP approach. By using an ESP approach, students are able to boost their comprehension of English material and use the English they already know to learn and to acquire new skills, since their interest in the field motivates them to interact with speakers and texts. It is therefore essential that the syllabus content of ESP is carefully justified in terms of relevance and motivational potential for the students. Accordingly, the ESP syllabus content should be carefully justified in terms of relevance and motivational potential for the learners. Three ESP course design approaches have emerged as a framework for teaching and learning, each of which shares components that can be categorized into four categories, objectives, methods, materials, and evaluations. Approaches to ESP course design a course design refers to the process of planning and structuring a course to achieve the desired goals. There are a number of elements involved in creating a course, the results of the needs analysis, the course designer's approach to syllabuses and methodologies, and existing materials, Robinson, 1991. In a similar vein, Hutchinson and Waters, 1987-65, have defined a course as an integrated series of teaching learning experiences, whose ultimate aim is to lead the learners to a particular state of knowledge. Three types of ESP course design approaches can be distinguished. Language-centered course design approach. Skills-centered course design approach. Learning-centered course design approach. Language-centered approach. The language-centered approach is the simplest way to develop a course and is known to the majority of English teachers. Its goal is to connect as directly as possible the analysis of the target situation and the content of the ESP course. It is the most simple and familiar type to English teachers. It is especially common in ESP. It is designed to connect the analysis of the target situation to the content of the ESP course as directly as possible. According to the language-centered perspective, the nature of the target situation determines the type of ESP training. Disadvantages of the language-centered approach The language-centered approach has a number of weaknesses and shortcomings. One it might be considered a learner-centered approach because it starts from the learners and their needs but in reality, it's not learner-centered. The learner is merely used as an indicator for identifying the target environment. Two the language-centered process can also be criticized for being a static and inflexible procedure. Three language-centric analyses can only provide a surface-level understanding of a target situation. It yields little information about the competence that underlay performance. Skills-centered approach. Numerous countries, particularly in Latin America, 
have implemented the skills-centered approach in universities and colleges. Students are required to read subject texts in English because the texts are not available in the mother tongue. Several ESP projects have been launched with the specific objective of developing students' ability to read in English in response to this need. The basic hypothesis is that behind every language behavior there are underlying skills and strategies, which the learner uses to produce or comprehend a discourse. Two fundamental principles of skills-centered course design are discussed. One basic theoretical hypothesis. This theory started from the assumption that in order to produce or comprehend language, the learner uses certain skills and strategies. By focusing on competence instead of surface performance data, the skills-centered approach looks at the competence that underlies the performance. 2. Pragmatic Basis This term pragmatic basis refers to Widdowson's, 1981, distinction between process-oriented and goal-oriented courses. According to Holmes, in ESP the main problem is usually one of the time available and student experience. First, the aims may be defined in terms of what is desirable. That is to be able to read in the literature of the student's specialism but, there may be nowhere near enough time to reach this aim during the period of this course. Secondly, the students may be in their first year of studies with little experience of literature of their specialism. Accordingly, both these factors may be constraints which say right from the start, the aims cannot be achieved during the course. ESP, then, focuses not on the achievement of a particular set of goals, but rather on enabling the learners to take advantage of the constraints they are given. It has a process-oriented approach to education that concentrates on ways to make students aware of their own abilities and potential, and motivates them to work on target texts on their own after the course concludes, so they can continue to improve. This approach is intended to help learners develop skills and strategies that will help them to become better information processors after the ESP course. According to the approach that emphasizes skills we should determine what processes enable someone to get things done behind target performance data. It is these processes that determine the ESP course. The skills-centered approach based on two fundamental principles. One according to the basic theoretical hypothesis, the basis of all language behavior is a set of skills and strategies that the learner uses as a means of acquiring the language. To a skills-centered approach draws its basis from the distinction made by Widdowson, 1981, between goal-oriented courses and process-oriented courses. A skill-centered approach incorporates two aspects of needs analysis. It leads to a deeper understanding of the essential competencies people need to perform well in a given situation. It enables the ESP course designer to discover what the students can bring to the course. Learning-Centered Approach The learner-centered approach is determined entirely by the learner's desire. According to this approach, the learner's decisions determine the learning process completely. Teachers can influence what they teach, but learners' ability to learn is determined solely by their own abilities. Learners' learning is viewed as a process of making sense of the flow of new information based on the knowledge and skills they already possess. Hence. Learning is an internal process that depends on the knowledge learners already possess and on their motivation and ability to use it. The process of learning is more than just a mental activity, it involves individuals and society negotiating. Learning is considered as a process in which learners make sense of how new information is presented by using the skills and knowledge they already possess. Disadvantages The learning-centered approach argues that we need to look beyond the competence required for people to be able to perform since we are more interested in how people acquire the competence, not the competence itself. Some disadvantages include a lack of structure or discipline in the learning process, causing students to feel overwhelmed and possibly not get as much out of the learning process as they would otherwise. Learner-centered instruction also has the disadvantage of too much independence. Conclusion. Teaching English for specific purposes includes teaching specific skills and languages that are required for a given purpose.
ESP programs are therefore developed based on an assessment of purposes and needs, as well as functions for which English is essential. ESP draws upon the technology and methodologies used by the disciplines it serves. It focuses on the language, grammar, lexicon, register, skills, discourse, and genres that correspond to these activities. Course design is based on three approaches. Language-centered approach concentrates on performance. Skills-centered approach concentrates on competence. Learning-centered approach concentrates on how to get competence.